Oh, guys, oh, I just talked for so long and didn't record. I just, that's so funny. That's crazy. Well, anyway, hello. Welcome back to my channel. It's Diamond K. And if you're new here, welcome to my channel. I'm Diamond. You can make yourself at home, boo. Get yourself acquainted. Get comfortable. Get comfortable, sorry. Somebody was commenting, repost on my pictures while I'm trying to film it. It's gonna be off. But I just wanna talk to you guys while I do my makeup. Because I haven't seen you guys forever. We haven't talked, and I'll explain why in this video today. So if you really want answers from me and as to where I've been, my blog, and what I've actually been dealing with and whatnot, um, stay tuned, because that's what you're getting today. So to begin, I was dealing with my spiritual journey. This started like really picking up like obviously in May last year. I tried to film my spiritual journey, get ready with me, but I like was editing it and I just don't think my recollection of the timeline is as accurate as I thought it was because I watched some overly old video the other day and realized that I was already spiritual at a time earlier than I thought I was. So I kind of want to like go back over and make sure I really get this like video done properly. So it probably will be a while before I do my whole journey video, but I will work on it. But anyway. So what happens is that a spiritual journey, blah, 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 I was working on myself through the summer, and then I went to the dark night phase of my spiritual journey, which if you don't know, your dark night phase is where all of these repressed traumas and emotions start coming back up and resurfacing. You have to deal with them, like you're being forced to deal with these certain things, and these were showing up in my relationship. My partner was forced to be to heal old wounds that I was not addressing, basically. It was a painful whole year of stuff like that, because it was both of our first serious relationships, but that was the first time I'd ever had somebody who directly reflected what I didn't like about myself not saying that he was doing those things but I'm saying when you're in a relationship your bad traits are going to be magnified and your good traits are gonna be magnified the things we get bad about other people are the things that we see in ourselves that we don't like don't forget that don't forget that baby so back to business it's a lot of emotions and chemicals and all this stuff you know what I'm saying it's just crazy it's crazy and it was wild for a while and there was a point where I felt like we would never be happy and I just want us to be happy I wanted us to be happy so bad don't ever think you can never be happy though because I'm very happy in my relationship now and it's very peaceful and it's at a place I never ever thought we would be able to achieve because I thought that I would always have anger issues because I, I stayed getting angry all the time and then I realized around the beginning of the summer I realized the concept of projection and then I learned that I didn't actually have self-love for myself I remember that I want you guys to think about this what does self-love look like to you what is genuine self-love not society's idea of it but what does genuine self-love look like to you comment below pause this and comment don't comment after hearing what I have to say after this because seriously I want to know what you guys think before because it's very hard to define isn't it I had a very hard time defining it very hard time society we present self-confidence as, as being vain and I wonder if that is something that we've been taught once again to help promote not loving ourselves because not loving yourselves keeps you in a low vibrational state because when you think about confidence in television shows and stuff, like the, the hottest girl, the mean girl, the queen bee or whatever, why are they always so disrespectful and nasty and rude? Like in real life, nobody likes bee girls at all. Beauty only goes so far. It really does. Let me know what you guys think self-love looks like to you. What does it look like to you? Because that's kind of what this video is about. Because my therapist asked me this a while ago. At this time, I went to my therapist because I wanted to start loving myself. I realized I was projecting so much in my relationship because I did not love myself and I didn't think I was worthy of a partner who loved me truly the way that my partner does. And so I was looking for any and every reason to be get mad at him to prove that he was a bad man who was just going to wrong me just like every other man. Yada, yada, yada. And then... One day I finally learned my lesson I realized like if you want to create something you can create that like you create your life by setting the expectations your expectations are what you usually receive okay so if you expect somebody to let you down don't be surprised when they do because you created that storyline so I have a therapist he asked me what, what I thought self-love looked like and I couldn't tell him for some reason what big truly like in love myself and confident would look like I could only tell him what it didn't look like it didn't look like looking in the mirror and, and looking at my stomach immediately it didn't look like looking at myself and tearing it to me it just didn't look like self-deprecating jokes it didn't look like what I had at the time because at the time my main problem was that I was pouring more into other people's problems than my own like much more like all of my energy onto other people's problems and that's just not a good idea because you don't have any energy left to take care of yourself and that's not ever a good thing ever. So that was my problem. So I started focusing and redirecting my attention on myself because I couldn't control anybody in my life. I could only control myself, how I react to them. And I started taking the power away from my anger because I found out that affirmations could save you, bro. Like sometimes affirmations are literally all you need. 
let me just get to the point what I learned actually let me tell you guys what I learned forget about the storyline because I mean I'll tell you the story at some point but not in this video I don't have that much storage so what I learned about what self-love actually looks like guys I learned this in March just from a bunch of uh, different uh, resources all coming together the universe putting the information into my hands so that I could share it with you guys you know oh, all that good stuff I learned what self-love truly looks like is loving yourself unconditionally no matter what the circumstances are and telling yourself that self-love is realizing that literally you are complete you are fully complete you are complete you are complete and that's a good affirmation to start with you, there's nothing you need to wait on you don't need to wait to be this way or that way to be lovable you don't need to wait until this or that happens to lose weight you don't need to wait until you have money to start whatever dream you've been dreaming of unless it really does take like a ton of money you know but a lot of times people wait like oh I want to build my wardrobe before I start being an influencer start today let the influencing journey build your wardrobe that's what I did the reason I started making my word about cheap videos is because I quit my job because I was being disrespected by a coworker who was projected clearly onto me because she was a bad coworker to her coworker so she was mad at me about it she was projected to me onto the way too hardcore in my business so I had to tell her that like I literally I was like girl I got a metal rod shoved up my cervix that's why I'm not coming into work tonight that's why I sold the shift that's why she like got me out of character like more than ever before this was the beginning of my spiritual awakening because people were just treating me like absolute garbage oh yeah anyway so I quit my job though and the reason that I started making those videos is because I didn't have money to order Aliexpress hauls so in the meantime I was gonna continue to provide content that added value and helped other people shop even though I couldn't be shopping myself and now I never have a lack of hauls ever like literally I'm always like behind I'm always behind and that's what will happen you don't have to wait to become an authority to start social media how are you gonna become an authority if you wait you have to start and then you become an authority by doing what other people are scared to do so self-love is accepting yourself all the time for example one of my reasons that I was projecting even more is because I got myself into the cycle because I was always projecting onto my partner and I hated that because I loved him so much and I do like it doesn't have anything to do with him why am I mad at him about stuff that obviously has to do with me and things I made in my head I hated that about me so much that I would like beat myself up about it all the time wake up every day hoping that I would not fight with him this time like we weren't going to fight today but I'll make sure of it focusing on what we're not gonna do instead of what we are gonna do which we are going to have a beautiful peaceful day together that is how I would approach the situation now but back then this is how I would approach our relationship and we could not hang out without me getting angry about something and I hated it because I felt like I had no control over my emotions because when I was not mad anymore I would be like I don't know why I'm getting mad like it felt like I was getting possessed almost to a point but I finally realized the, the way to handle that is to not like repress those emotions and be mad at yourself for having them the way to handle that is to accept yourself for having these emotions fully work on truly not just kind of accepting that like all right I accept that I'm resentful now why do I still feel this way like truly be like it's okay that I feel this way because all feelings are impermanent they will always pass everything is temporary time always heals everything think about everything else that's happened to you you still are here right now you're still perfectly fine you're still perfectly fine like, everything always works out for you in the end and if you adapt that like mindset guys I swear watch your life literally just turn all the way around a oh, whip around whip around like a cop seeing somebody sitting on somebody's lap in the back seat that's all it takes guys you are only as strong as your belief system allows you to be so when it comes to a lot of attraction any spirituality thing you are as powerful as your mind is open okay so however much you believe in stuff is how much it'll happen which is why it's important to track your manifestations to thank the universe when you do get something you want to acknowledge that and thank it all of it's important all of it is supported but I mean I just, oh, I didn't really make an ally for this. I just want to talk to you guys just for a second. And self-love also looks like, it's like not having to be perfect all the time because realizing no matter what, even if you don't look good today, it's okay if you don't look good. It's not your job to look good for anybody. It's not your job to please the male gaze, that's for sure. It's definitely not my job. I've done enough. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I just mean as a black woman, and it's not my job to do anything for the man. But another thing I learned, guys, is how to manage my emotions. I used to see my emotions as enemies, and then I learned that they just are a guidance system to tell you what you need that you're not giving yourself in your life right now. And also, they tell you what you're manifesting, because you manifest 24-7. Whatever's in your subconscious mind is manifesting all the time. But you can't access your subconscious directly. The way to access it is to pay attention to how you react to other people's actions in the world. Because everything you do, you think, it's a reflection of opinions you have about yourself that you're not addressing. The other day, for example, I felt rejected. After I wrote out my feelings about how sad I was, <laughs> I freaking meditated. I did a meditation about letting go of negative emotions where you just let it happen. You allow it to be in you. You allow it to be free and express itself. When you repress it, anything in life, think about it. Think about even on, on any scale. When you tell somebody they can't do something, they always want to do it. If you tell your brain that you can't feel jealousy, you're going to start feeling jealous and you're going to feel bad every single time you feel jealousy. Allow yourself to be jealous and figure out why. 
Look into why. These emotions are important. They tell you things about yourself that you wouldn't know otherwise. They are your friends. They are your guidance system. You have to reframe it. Because I used to see them as my enemy. It's not the case at all. They are a tool. They are a tool to know what you're manifesting, to actively can take control of your life. I learned how to overcome fear, guys. So I have a phobia of bathroom fans that makes it... Ugh, it just makes life miserable for me. I was so tired of living in a place of fear, though. I'd also been hermiting in my house. I've been hermiting since, like, 2019. Because I was already hermiting for a year when the pandemic started. I'd started trying to get out again two months before we went into quarantine. I'm, like, more inclined to hermit at this point because of it. But it's okay. The beginning of air season came in. I just felt like I released everything. Like, I just realized, I was like, you don't have to sit in the house. I don't have to pick between the living room and the bedroom. I can go wherever I want. And also, all winter, I felt so tired. And exhausted and I didn't know where to go and I felt scared I felt fearful all winter and I feel like I just released that fear like this past week guys and I feel so empowered more empowered than I ever felt in my life and I feel myself blossoming I genuinely I genuinely feel like a butterfly like blossoming right now I do think that this is like my this is my moment there's I feel so much abundance around me I feel so much um appreciation for life nothing could make me upset anymore like for the most part for the most part okay I want to say like that that's toxic positivity but I mean I don't get like irritated I out of control anymore my emotions don't control me I'm in control of my life and it feels absolutely amazing and I've realized if you start affirming your own control of your life and that you, there's nothing you cannot do actually affirm that you can do anything because I like to affirm positives instead of unaffirming negatives you know like saying nobody could take my husband from me saying my husband is loyal to me you know like that you want to reword it to like that you don't want to address what you don't want and so I learned though I could turn my attention from the bathroom fan I used to feel like I had to learn to like the way it looked and to not be scared when I looked at it but I realized I can just redirect my attention and after almost a year meditating it's not hard anymore it's not hard to redirect my attention and forget and fully enjoy myself at peak pampered in the bathroom without anxiety because I love pampering myself and I felt like I was being robbed from me because I couldn't be in the bathroom without anxiety so guys, I feel absolutely amazing. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It took like one time for me to realize it's all in my head. I don't have to like let fear control me anymore. And I can leave the house and be safe. And every time my boyfriend leaves, he always comes home safe. So maybe I don't have to worry about him so much anymore. Maybe I truly can trust the universe and allow that everything to happen. And I've been trying to also work on letting go of feeling like I need to make my storyline so much. You don't always have to manifest, guys. You literally just have to go with the flow and stop self-sabotaging. Stop doubting yourself. Stop setting the tone for your life negatively being like well you know my luck our, this isn't gonna happen i'll never get into med school this that you know you're the only one to blame if you do that if you talk like that what i mean by the power of your beliefs is that you can achieve however much you believe you can achieve if you think you have until monday to do it you'll get it done by monday but if you had in two hours to do it you'd probably find a way to do it now usually um and even then like it might take you a while to get to the point where you can do it after hearing this video if this is like resonating with you some way um, like people could tell you so many times like what to do with your life and like to get it up and stuff but you have to make a decision and it is a one-time decision every time i've ever leveled up in my life it has been a decision to do better it's been a one-time decision where i'm like okay i'm done playing around i'm done not eating right i'm done not exercising i'm done doing this i'm done being scared of that and i don't do it again you don't go back but also the power of accepting because the power of accepting i gotta make little videos in each one of these but the power of accepting the things that you want to release as well like, I accepted the fact that I felt so lazy and irresponsible almost for, for being stressed out about YouTube and school. But really, I accept that because I have a lot on my plate. I'm a full-time college student, and then I'm also working with collaborating with brands and stuff, trying to run my own TikTok, my own Instagram, my own Twitter, my own YouTube. No managers, no editors, nothing, no accountants. I want to open my business. I want to open a channel with my boyfriend. I want to open a second channel. And I have school, and I have to like, balance my mental health and everything, guys. That is a lot on my plate, so it is okay for me to be overwhelmed. I accept myself, and even when I feel overwhelmed, even when I feel anxious, even when I feel insecure, even when I feel jealous, I accept myself and love myself unconditionally. It is okay. These feelings are valid. They are here to teach me something about myself. They are not my enemy. Period. They are not your enemy, ever. So please, guys, the power of reframing and the power of redirecting your attention are so underrated when it comes to achieving happiness in this lifetime. In this lifetime. Another thing that like definitely kept me from like posting a lot was I I was really scared of being bad at things. I was really scared of trying something new because I was scared I would be bad at it at the beginning. But I didn't realize it's okay to be bad at things at the beginning. No matter what you do, you always get better as long as you keep on doing it. Like with wigs, guys, you remember how I started off looking like 
oh my gosh it's just not good not good with the wigs literally everything in life when it comes to learning something it's about like discipline it's about the frequency when it comes to meditation it's about the frequency not the duration but how often do you do it truly okay so basically i've been trying to find the key to a happy life a happy life that can involve social media because social media is kind of toxic but i do like social media i've always i grew up on the computer i posted my first youtube video when i was 12 years old and 10 months to the day to the day <laughs> yeah, so I realized I was scared that I would be good at something. I was scared that I'd look at my stuff and be embarrassed or something. I don't really know what I was scared of. I just felt like not enough, basically. I was letting fear of being inadequate keep me from doing things. And I was letting fear of what could happen stop keep me from like doing things as well. Really living in the future of what ifs and whatnot. And letting my anxiety just take over to the point where I wouldn't even leave the house. And it just sucked. So I finally released that though. It's the day that Aries season. I don't know what day that was. I just know that it was the day Aries season began that I just felt so much better, guys. So much better. So much better. And I just feel like this is it now. This is my time. Like I'm flourishing. I'm releasing, advancing. The power behind accepting what you don't want in your life is so unspoken about, probably for a reason, because I mean, when you think about it from a society's point of view, we are we are nothing more to the ruling class than other than workers. So why would they teach us to love and accept ourselves? Loving, accepting, and taking care of ourselves. Taking care of ourselves. That's the point for self-love too, I forgot, sorry. Taking care of yourself because if you love yourself, then make sure you eat breakfast so you're not mad all day. If you love yourself, then work out so your body doesn't have arthritis when you're older as bad as it might. If you love yourself, give yourself a shower, brush your teeth because you, you deserve to be taken care of. It's like treating yourself like you would your kid treat yourself like you would your kid or your partner so when i'm sad now instead of being mad at myself for being sad or being embarrassed i tell myself man it's okay i hug myself and i tell myself i'm okay i'm gonna be okay i live through every single thing else i'm a strong woman i'm going to get through this i'm fine like i'm absolutely fine and it's okay to feel this way it's okay like it's okay to cry let it out i'm sorry to myself guys and nothing nothing is more comforting nothing is more comforting please try it next time if you're watching this right now you hear me please Try it next time, and if you do, please come back and tell me what it, what this did for you. I would love to hear it because the power it holds to accept yourself as is, accept yourself now, with your current weight, your current skin tone, your current not skin tone, not current skin tone. What was that? No, you no, we're not black fishing around here. You better stay the same skin tone your whole life. But you really got to learn to realize like you are perfect as is. As is, you are exactly where you're supposed to be right here and right now. And that is something that gave me such peace when it came to anxiety. I don't have to stress. I don't have to worry about getting rich. I don't have to worry about this or that. I don't have to worry about everything right now. I just have to worry about what to do next. What is going on right now? I'm here. Why don't I be here now? That's the key to trying happiness. It truly is in the present. It's not in the past. It's not in the future. By aligning with happiness, you breed more of it. So the, the real way to find happiness in your life is to work now on the things that are actually going to make you happy. Not the things that society tells you, like getting rich and getting in a relationship and getting skinny. They sell you these ideas so that you will work your butt off constantly. So you can be a strong worker and so that you can always feel inadequate to reach these not even real bodies. The bodies that we are idolizing don't exist, so why are we doing that? Like, that's not my business because I don't got to ever tell anybody else what to do with their body because in the day, it's your body, it's your life. Take care of yourself the way that you want your loved ones to take care of themselves. When you're sad, talk to yourself the way you would genuinely talk to your best friend. Would you be mad at them for being irritated that they got screwed over? Or would you be mad that they got screwed over and mad at that person instead of blaming yourself and being mad at yourself for being irritated? Things like that. Just allow yourself to accept and feel every emotion and realize that thoughts don't manifest, your beliefs manifest, your thoughts don't manifest. So when you have intrusive thoughts, they're not going to manifest unless you play into them. Okay, this is so important. They don't explain this well enough. You cannot control your thoughts, but you can control how you react to them. And I'm sure you've heard that. But by controlling how you react to your thoughts, you control your world. You could set intentions and manifestations. Think of that as your superpower. That's how you control the world. Your thoughts are the superpower. And you will see, give it a chance. Try to be positive for a day. See where it gets you. You have nothing to lose. Literally nothing. Try to expect something good to happen today for once instead of something bad to happen. Maybe give yourself a joking compliment or like gash yourself about how pretty you are instead of making a self-deprecating joke next time you hang out with somebody, okay? Things like that. Be nice to yourself. Stop entertaining those things. And it's okay when it does happen. It's okay when you feel these feelings. It's okay when you do feel jealousy. It's okay when you make a self-deprecating joke now and then. It's okay when you can't always take care of yourself because you're still unconditionally lovable and your body and life will always find a way to balance itself out again anyway it really will think about all the times you've been through so much pain and then the times are full of happiness and joy and calm and peace that preceded after everything is impermanent it really is and you could find joy in that or you could find fear in it but i try to find joy in that rather than focusing on like losing things 
And what I won't have, I want to focus on, if I don't like this feeling, it's okay because it's not going to last forever. Thank goodness for that. <laughs> uh, let me get this on. So there's this concept called Checking Your Alignment. I learned from a podcast called LOA Recon. Amazing podcast. They taught me my main foundation in law of attraction, basically. It's like a concept where, so say you apply for an internship, but you've already applied for 29 and you haven't heard back from any of them or you got rejected from every one of them. Or maybe you have a history of just not getting jobs you applied for. First of all, you apply to this internship, but you apply like thinking about the fact that 29 other internships have already like rejected you. So I probably won't hear back from this one anyway. Do you think you're going to hear back from them? Who is in control of your life? You are. You are in control of your life. Whether you like it or not, you are in control of your life. You really have to really acknowledge that and acknowledge that you also take responsibility for things that happen in your life sometimes when you kind of might have got yourself in a mindset to make them more likely to happen. The way I like to think of it is, is like, there's only so long that I can continue to project and continue to like be negative and continue to eat me after like learning about what projection is and realizing that there's like, it's like deeper and that I have problems that aren't going away and so I handle it. I wouldn't have like been able to watch what the health and then keep eating me after that. No, I can't. Like, after you learn certain things, like, you simply cannot go back to not knowing them. You're not able to go back to a world like that. Like, obviously, that's a concept that we could probably build on a lot. I really forgot what I was saying. Oh, yeah. That applied for me when it came to self-deprecating jokes, having low expectations. It's called checking your alignment so, or before you go into the interview. Imagine it going well. Check your alignment. Set your intentions before you do anything and watch your goals manifest faster than you ever imagined. And also, one last thing I do want to talk about while I'm here is the power of letting go. Guys, when it comes to law of attraction, that is everything. If you're sitting here constantly worried about, oh, I need to make this happen, I need to make this manifest, it's not manifesting because you're putting pressure on it. You haven't let it go. You haven't realized that you are perfectly complete now. You are perfectly fine as is. You're perfectly fine as is right now. Oh, ugh, this is what it is. The key to the law of attraction. This is the key for me anyway. That people really seem to lack a lot of times. Like this is where like they go wrong. The law of attraction. When it comes to letting go. And I get sometimes it's hard to let go of things. Genuinely. I used to be the biggest spoiled brat. Until I started learning about law of attraction. Letting go and realizing that. I'm fine with or without a million dollars right now. I'm still alive today. And all I have to worry about is today. I don't have to worry about six years from now where I'll be. Because when have I ever been in the same place? Six consecutive years in a row. What have I not grown? I'm like, where was I six years ago? How old am I? 21? I would have been it's like 15, 14. I would have been 15? I don't know. All right, guys. I don't do math. And it's Saturday. So don't. <laughs> when it comes to manifesting, if you cannot manifest quickly, you need to be real of yourself and tell yourself, I am fine with or without this item. I am complete. I will live to see another day. I will not die. I will be here tomorrow. I might be irritated, but it's okay to be uncomfortable. Also, something I learned this month. Oh my gosh, guys. I learned so much this month. This month is amazing, guys. I'm so happy. But I've also learned I really could do anything I want to do. I can do anything I want to do. I just have to believe that I can do it. You literally have to believe what you can do it. Because like I said, one more time. It's not your thoughts that manifest, it's your beliefs. So if I believe that I can't start a business deep down because it's a lot of money and I don't want to handle all that money because I'm scared of money. Guess who can't start a business because she's scared of money and she letting fear cripple her. Oh, speaking of fear, another thing I learned, guys, oh my gosh. So basically when it comes to things you're scared of, do it. Unless it's a genuine threat, do it as fast as you can because every time you recoil in fear, and I was a coward like two weeks ago, but now I'm a different woman, <laughs> literally. But um, every time you guys recoil in fear, every time... Every time we, not you guys, like, why am I projecting like that? Every time you're scared of something and you recoil instead of facing your fears, your brain believes that that meant that he, whatever he was scared of, it was right to be scared and that it just saved your life and that you should keep being scared of that. So when it comes to, like, real, like, things that are actually dangerous, that's great, but not when it comes to irrational fears, when it comes to, like, social anxiety, stuff like that, when it comes to public speaking, that's not good. So every time that we recoil in fear, we become more and more scared, we become more and more controlled by fear, we are literally submitting to fear. But I learned in March to lead from a place of love instead of fear, and just to have faith that everything works out for me, and have faith that people are going to do right by me because I'm doing my best to do right by everybody in my life. Genuinely. I genuinely am. And yes, there are bad people in the world, and yes, things do happen sometimes, but you will cross any and every bridge when you get there. Every and any bridge. Every and any bridge. You can handle anything. You can handle literally anything. So. 
yeah guys that's what i've learned this month and this month guys obviously april is about to be a month for the baddie and a budget community because look at like what i already gave you i don't know i i watched my content yesterday i spent the whole day watching my youtube i've never watched like so many of my videos ever and I would love them. I love them, guys. I literally have never seen half my videos all the way to the end, like with the end screen and the cards and everything. And I was just so proud to see that, like, my aesthetic and my vision has come across so beautifully like, in my content. And it makes me so happy. It makes me so excited to make more content for you guys. So excited. So excited to see where we go because for the while I did feel like I was just like stuck. But inspired when it came to like my brand, and I feel like I finally know what I want my brand to be. Mm. Yeah, so that is stay tuned. Ugh. But this is about the end of this Get Ready With Me video. I hope that you liked it. Just chit chat. You guys really do deserve to know what's going on. Oh, one more thing. Yeah, why have I not been talking to you guys so much? Because I have social anxiety. Oh my gosh, that's why I haven't been going live. It's why I stopped responding comments for like a majority of winter. It's not at all because I don't care what you guys have to say. And it's not at all because I don't see your comments. It's because at the time I was always stressed out and always like behind struggling in life. ADHD. I always felt like I had endless to-do lists of stuff to do that were never getting done. And it was just kind of like a cycle that would get worse and worse and pound on itself. So every time I got a text or a comment though, I always felt like anxious because I felt like people were waiting for me to, like, to deliver to them. Like I felt like people needed me to do something for them. I felt like it added more to my plate and it would just give me anxiety which would shut me down. Not able to do anything. That would make me depressed. Not able to like get out of bed and like do stuff and it sucked guys. It really did suck. Finally started watching my content on TikTok and YouTube and that's all the motivation I need. Because when I stop making content, it's not because I don't like you at all. I love you guys so much. It's literally, it's because I don't want disappoint you and sometimes I just doubt myself but never again because why would I waste time I've learned now like you just have to make the decision that you're not gonna do that to yourself anymore because if you don't believe in yourself who will genuinely it's no one else's job to believe in you it's no one else's job to believe in you besides yourself seriously that responsibility all falls on you and your beliefs and who you believe you are as a person that will decide where you end up in this lifetime so make sure that you plant only good seeds in your mind. Do not plant a seed in your mind that you would not want to see grow, okay? I hope that this video gave somebody some insight about something that maybe would help them with their something they're working through. If anything I said meant a lot to you guys, felt profound, felt like the information you needed to know, let me know because I'm always like projecting all this stuff onto my roommates and they don't need it. They don't need the advice. I mean, one of them does. The other one doesn't care. Um, but it is what it is. Um, but I, I just really want to help people. I really do. I realize that happiness in life doesn't come from money but he it just gets you out of the nine to five which is a huge barrier to being happy because it doesn't allow time for mental health regulation and that's why we obsess over money but we put all the emphasis of happiness on money when happiness comes from within happiness comes from having a good relationship with yourself which also can be tainted when you don't honor agreements and when you let people down your opinion of yourself taints in your head i started feeling flaky after a while when i was like um having social anxiety because i couldn't fall through plans because i was like trapped in my anxiety it sucks but it also think about how things compound i feel like i really learned in march that nothing in life is black and white everything is a spectrum sexuality is a spectrum political ideologies are a spectrum right and wrong it should be right and wrong everything is a spectrum nothing in this world is similar nothing 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 and finally on one more thing <laughs> guys i learned to be freaking so grateful to be myself to be so grateful full of gratitude all the time practice gratitude for being yourself and also practice gratitude for taking care of yourself i thank myself for doing meditation as well i take such great care of myself i'm so glad i take such great care of myself i'm so glad i am my own best friend things like that and saying things to yourself like what affirmation i say is that i love myself unconditionally or i'm the most beautiful woman in the world tell yourself what you want to hear and watch it literally manifest into your life in like a week or two if not less like if not less guys so oh let me know i hope this video helped you guys i hope it does i like talking about this stuff it makes me feel good it gets it off my chest i don't journal enough this isn't helping both of us <laughs> i hope that this was like helped you guys figure out though like also why i've been absent and please know i love you guys unconditionally so much i love you all so much and i'm so grateful for you i'm so grateful for you i'm so grateful for you i'm really genuinely so grateful for you guys and whenever i'm not here it's only because i'm trying to work on myself mentally so i can be the best role model possible so i can give you guys content that adds value to your life and so that i can develop a relationship that is healthy with youtube because i'm trying to develop one that's healthy with youtube so that i can not get burnt out i don't remember i meant to talk about that in this video but i don't think i did i don't want to talk about it anymore i'm almost out of breath <laughs> but a lot of youtubers they go for phases so like it's fun at first and then it starts to feel like work and then like uh, there's more after that but we're not talking about the rest this video is about done but the whole point of starting youtube is that you have a fun job not a job that you love 
So I had to work on reframing my perspective and my approach to making content and to finding balance in my life. And that's what I'm focusing on now. Now I've overcome fear. I've overcome fear of mediocrity. I've overcome fear of not being enough because I already am always enough no matter what I do. Even if I didn't give my all, I'm still inherently worthy. I'm still a good person worthy of like the decent, basic decency from everybody and respect and love. So it really don't matter. It really don't matter, you guys, okay? So I'm gonna head out. I hope that you guys like this video. And let me know if you watch the end. Let me know it. Stay tuned for this wig review, guys, if you love it. Because I know I do. She is so beautiful. So beautiful. I wish I knew my hairbrush was. It'd make it even prettier. All right, guys. I love you so much. I'll see you soon, okay? Bye.